I hope you guys liked the movie Inception because we're about to do a mini series within a mini series. This video and the two that follow it will be on the subject of combining drawn and parametric masks. In this episode, we'll look at exclusive mode. Let's go. Hi and welcome to episode 113 of Understanding Darktable. As I said in the intro, there is a lot to cover in the combining of drawn and parametric masks. I have actually already recorded the content and it was when I finished recording it that I realised this is way too much for just one episode. So I'm re-recording the intros and outros for these three videos and I will simply cut to the content that I've already recorded. So exclusive mode here we go we've talked about drawn masks we've talked about parametric masks in this episode we're going to look at how we combine a drawn and a parametric mask there are multiple ways for them to interact before we dive into this i do need to just state for the record that in my opinion and i could very well be wrong but in my opinion there is a disconnect between the way Darktable functions and the way the documentation has been written. Now, I don't know if the error is in the code or if it's in the documentation. Or maybe it's just me being an idiot. I don't know. I do need to say a big word of thank you to Todd Pryor, who wrote this Tolstoy-esque epic um, on the way he believes the masks do and should operate. I have read that multiple times. Some of it I understand, some of it I don't. So what I am going to do with this video is explain the parts that I do understand and, and demonstrate them accordingly. And I will bring to your attention those areas where I believe there is this disconnect between the way Darktable operates and the way the documentation is written. And for the record, yes, I have logged a bug report on GitHub. Uh, so thank you, Todd, for your, your written essay. Uh, that was very helpful. Okay, I've got an image here, one of the many that I shot with Tegan last week in our steampunk shoot. I've processed it up. Uh, as you can see, really haven't done a whole lot filmic bit of exposure, color calibration, that's it. Let's suppose that I just wanted to select the gold of this fob watch on the left. And again, I'm going to use the color balance RGB module as our guinea pig. So I am going to turn on drawn and parametric masks for the color balance RGB module. Now, the first thing to understand with regards the way drawn and parametric mask elements are combined is that there is this combine masks drop down and there are four modes exclusive inclusive exclusive and inverted and inclusive and inverted the default is exclusive now you will notice that when you select a parametric or a drawn and parametric mask that all of the parametric channels will be set to a positive polarity. And it is a trap for young players. You can toggle the polarity of one parametric channel whilst all of the others are in the opposite orientation. So at the moment, we've got everything set to positive except for our luminosity, which is negative. Okay, yeah, so just be aware of that. You can have polarity on an individual parametric channel level and that can throw you for six if you are not aware of that all right by default all of our parametric channels have a positive polarity and the drawn mask has a negative polarity that is the default for exclusive mode now the reason it is called exclusive mode is because you start with one mask element whether that's a drawn element or a parametric element it doesn't matter but you start with one element and that will create a selection of some description every mask element you add 
after that point will exclude more pixels from the mask. So to demonstrate, if we turn our mask on, we can see that all pixels are selected. They're all yellow. They all have a value of one. What this means is that if we made some adjustment to the parameters of the color balance RGB module, those changes would be applied to every pixel in the image. That's where we're starting from. Let's turn the preview off. Now, like I said, let's say we wanted to pick up the gold of this fob watch. We would go to the hue slider and we would probably do something like this. That should get us in the ballpark for the gold pixels. Turn our mask on. As we can see, all of the gold pixels are selected, but there are also other pixels in the image which have been included in this mask that we don't want. And because we are in exclusive mode, whatever element we add at the second, third, fourth stages will exclude more pixels. So let's go for a path and we will just draw a path around this fob watch. And if we turn our mask back on, we can see that that worked exactly as we expected. The second element, which was the drawn path, has excluded, because we're in exclusive mode, any pixels from the mask, which were picked up in the first step, which was the hues range that we defined, and limited it to only those pixels which fall inside the path. Okay, so far so good. Now, we've got the polarity switch for the drawn mask. If we were to toggle that, what would happen then is our mask would be whatever was defined in the first step, which was our parametric mask, which picked up all of our gold pixels across the entire image, but it would be the inverse of the drawn path. So it would be everything outside the drawn path and not anything inside the drawn path. Let's see. Toggle the drawn mask and voila. Now, it looks like there are some pixels included in the watch. That might be an opacity thing. Yes, it is. Okay, so let me set my opacity to 100%, which is where it should have been. My apologies. So now that has done what we thought it should do. Also means that the drawn mask will look a little bit different now in its negative polarity because I didn't have the opacity at 100%. Okay, but you get the idea. By toggling the drawn mask, we're essentially saying respect the first parameter, the hue range that we selected, but then toggle the drawn mask between what's inside the path or what's outside the path. Okay, it's a simple inversion of the drawn element of the, the mask. Now, we can, if we want to, go to other parametric channels and start choosing based on saturation or choosing based on luminosity. Let's say we didn't want the darkest pixels. We could exclude the darkest pixels by simply selecting a range like so. So now our luminosity is limited to only the brightest pixels. Again, still respecting the first two stages of the mask that we've built so far. But of course, as I said, we could invert the polarity of just this channel, which will do that. So now we've got only the pixels that met the hue range that we selected, only the pixels that fall inside the path that we drew, and now the inverse of the luminosity that we've created here. So now we are only getting the darkest pixels, not only the lightest pixels. Like I said, incredibly powerful stuff, but it does take a little bit of wrapping your head around it. All right, let's leave it there for this episode. And in episode 114, we will look at inclusive mode. Take care. I'll catch you in the next one.